It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. Now back to IRG's Health Talk. Next guest, Dr. Anastasia Jones, naturopathic physician from Sage Integrative Medicine Clinic. Changes in the brain after a head injury. There's got to be some things that go on, Shannon. We're especially aware of that with football players, but a lot of people suffer head injuries and some changes happen. Absolutely. We're just beginning to understand all the changes that occur from TBIs, concussions, athletes, non-athletes, et cetera, et cetera. Great information, great understanding of what's happening more and more every day. Here's Dr. Jones and Shannon O'Kelly. Dr. Anastasia Jones, thank you for joining us here on Health Talk. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Shannon. Yeah, thanks for coming down and joining us again. You're a naturopathic physician. Yes, Let's I talk am. about that specialty and your area of interest. Okay, so um, I have been a naturopathic physician for about 10 years. I've been interested in health for a long, long time, though. And um, just to be clear, I um, my background in specialty training was not in neurology. That came a little bit later, but I um, started in um, basically in um, family practice as naturopathic physicians. We are um, licensed primary care providers in the state of Washington, and I owned a small community health clinic uh, here in Seattle and Capitol Hill for a long time. So I really got to see a little bit of everything in that location. And that's where I slowly um, developed this interest. I was working a lot with patients who were struggling with depression and anxiety, which is common. But what I was realizing was a lot of these patients had actually suffered from um, traumatic brain injuries of some sort and were really struggling with that um, sequelae of anxiety and depression and a real shift in um, in their ability to function after that. So would you After say those would you say um, your practice now is uh, is that a subspecialty for you this it's, neurodegenerative? It's, it comes up a lot. It's um, it's definitely an area that I'm continuing to deepen my interest in and my um, and my um, expertise. And I recently went to a very interesting um, neuroendocrinology conference down in Portland, which was really really enlightening to me. And um, it comes up quite a bit, the number of people who, once again, they don't come into me for that specific reason, but how many people um, I realize were working on things and they're really, really stuck. So what I was seeing is people were coming in and I was working with them and um, we'd run their basic blood work and we'd, you know, look at their nutrition and we'd look at supplements and I do some hands on. I would do things like craniosacral and things. And I was finding some people just weren't that responsive to what seemed the standard, you know, modalities of care. Um, so I started digging a little deeper and um, doing some neurological testing or um, neurotransmitter testing and finding that a lot of these people were just through the roof on things like glutamate mm-hmm. and some of our other um, what are called excitatory neurotransmitters. And when we're locked in those patterns, it's very, very hard for the brain to heal. And, and just so our, for our listeners to understand here, when you say neuroendocrinology, I mean, what we're talking about here, folks, is is, is uh, chemical transmitters and chemical substances exactly. that excite or deactivate your brain. Exactly. They, yeah. So you're spot on. And I mean, it goes a little deeper than that. In fact, even our immune system's involved because our immune system is that first, you know, that first system on the scene when there's trauma. And that activates then the neurotransmitters. And so a lot of times what you'll see is after somebody, well, let me back up even a little more. Actually, one of the other reasons I got interested in this is that I myself in 2011 suffered a pretty serious concussion, a traumatic brain injury, playing soccer with um, a bunch of big guys that I had no business playing with. (laughs) And, you know, I just thought, oh, you know, little mini concussion, no big deal. But what, what happened was after that, I had never struggled with anxiety and I developed severe anxiety Mm -hmm. and I was like what is going on like I was just always in fight or flight after that and um, not functioning the way I used to and I just couldn't quite you know so that was when I really started to look into it you know for personal reasons and was able to get a handle on that but I was seeing it with patients and um, what what really happens and this is this is fascinating because it's really been fleshed out in so many studies and a lot of these studies are coming out of the VA Right. Mm, I see. So they're looking at veterans who have had re- repeated, you know, sometimes one big one or sometimes it can be many little ones. Everyone's going to react differently. Um, repeated traumas and trauma can be physical, but it can also be psychological or chemical. More with Dr. Jones and Shannon O'Kelly right after this time out on Como. 
It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. IRG's Health Talk continues. We continue our conversation with Dr. Anastasia Jones and Shannon O'Kelly talking about brain injuries. Well, Dr. Anastasia Jones, um, you're doing a great job. We're talking about traumatic brain injury and some of the results or sequelas of brain injuries. And you were mentioning about the VA studies with a lot of, uh, I'm sure, patients that have had histories of TBIs and some of the results that they're finding. And um, uh, some of the changes that we see in the neurotransmitters and chemicals of the brain. Let's talk about that and let's talk about some treatment. Exactly. So what's happening is um, people are triggering, what's happening is um, a glutamate storm, essentially. This highly excitatory neurotransmitter, which serves a purpose in small amounts. It's the Goldilocks theory, right? Right, okay. A little bit, um, you know, a little bit's not enough. Too much is is toxic to the neurons, and you want to be just kind of in that sweet middle spot. And what they're finding is people after traumatic brain injury are locked in these glutamate storms. Um, On testing, I see this in neurotransmitter testing. Um, We do, like, urine neurotransmitter testing. And when people come back high, we want to start to calm that down. And that can be a hard one to turn off. So there's ways to address it. Um, There's some really specific amino acids that can help to lower it. Um, One of those is taurine. That can be really, really helpful. What we're trying to do is bring GABA, which is calming, back into balance Mm. with glutamate. But GABA doesn't work so well because sometimes GABA can go down the pathway back to glutamate. So we're looking at things that are going to lower glutamate specifically. A great one is magnesium, and we're talking about pretty good amounts. Um, Magnesium 3 and 8 is a great one to cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, lowering free calcium because calcium is like if glutamate's the gun, calcium is like the bullet. So we got to mm. keep that lo- that free calcium low, and that means it's important to have adequate amounts of vitamin D and vitamin K. Lithium orotate, which is a great trace mineral, not you know not in the high amounts people are using for um, bipolar disorder and stuff, but low amounts of lithium orotate, lower glutamate, and then things that are actually going to protect the cells from cell death from the glutamate, and that's going to be things like choline is really, really good at that. L-theanine's been shown to protect, and then high amounts of DHA, which is a fatty acid found in um, fish, or for Mm -hmm. people who don't want to do fish oil, um, there's algae forms. And we're talking about high amounts because that's really going to protect those neurons from that cell death. And then things like transcendental meditation, biofeedback, um, even yoga. Gentle yoga has been shown to start to lower that glutamate storm. So there's some lifestyle changes that can be great. Let me ask you a question. Is glutamate normally... Uh, would you consider it one a fight or flight or um, well, what kind of hormone or so or, or glutamate chemical is, is it? a neurotransmitter? It's technically, although you will see the catecholamines, adrenaline, uh-huh. um, right. epinephrine, norepinephrine, those will often be elevated in conjunction with the glutamate. Those are made in the adrenals. It's almost like the body gets that signal and it does go into fight or flight. So the same things will lower both. Um, and the um, the mechanisms, they both do put people in the state of high anxiety. So so you're bringing them all down simultaneously. I, mean, boy, I, I tell you, just listening to this, I mean, it just brings me back to a, a, a lot of classes, a lot of studies. I mean, all I can say is the body is a fascinating machine. I mean, and we are understanding it from a collaborative team approach. I'm so thankful and, and so interested to continue conversation with you, maybe down the road, because of uh, brain health and mindfulness and mental health is so important in our society. And we know so much and we hear so much about TBIs and the concussion world with athletes. So thank you so much for your time. Great information. You did a great job. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks again to Dr. Anastasia Jones, naturopathic physician from Sage Integrative Medicine, talking about the biochemical changes that can happen after a head injury. If you'd like to get more information, sagemedclinic.com. It's been a very interesting topic today. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, the collaborative effort in mindfulness and mental health, naturopathic MDs, physical therapists is so important. All right. We're back with our final segment after this on Como.